Welcome to the Time to Fly podcast. It's time to give your business wings and take flight to achieve more impact, influence, and income with unique perspectives, tools, and tips from successful entrepreneurs and business professionals to help your business fly. Here to educate, encourage, and entertain you with their own unique perspectives and experience, plus sharing anecdotes of growing up as cowgirls. Here's your host, Nicole Homont. Welcome to this episode of the Time to Fly podcast. I'm your host today, Nicole Homont, here with Dave Glazier, owner of Fit Life Champions. Dave develops online fitness and nutrition programs that help busy adults improve mental health, decrease stress, and boost energy. He is a speaker, author, father, and a jiu-jitsu blue belt that believes sharing the benefits of fitness and nutrition to improve mental health is a lifetime goal. Additional passions include mentoring personal trainers that want to build a business, master online training, and open their own studio across the world. Welcome to the Time to Fly podcast, Dave. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, as a dad and having a social life and a business, we always ask people, what app or resource do you find yourself relying on over and over again for productivity or to help create balance in your life? Uh, that's a really good question. And, you know, a few years into my business, I discovered Google Suite. So everything that Google has available for us, whether that's my calendar or Drive or documents or Sheets, pretty much is the greatest tool that I can use on a daily basis because when I save time in my businesses, then I have more time freedom to spend outside and actually enjoying the life that we're trying to afford for ourselves. I love Google. I've been a Google person, Android person for a long, long time. How do you keep track of like your to-do lists and stuff? Sure. So I'm an Apple fan, but I use all the Google Suite apps on an Apple, on an iPhone. And I do have the section where I make to-do lists in the notes on my phone. However, when I'm communicating with my team and we're sharing documents back and forth, each of those documents are listed by their name. So we each have access to it. And then at the very bottom is where we list out our to-do list for each other. For example, we've been building this huge program, online access for exercises that people can use anywhere. And my teammate who's been instrumental in helping me do that has his own Google Doc. And for the first eight weeks to 10 weeks of his internship and qualification for employment, uh, we had it, his whole process list listed. Here's your to-do list. Here's what I want you to learn, et cetera, keeping us on track. And then at the very bottom is our shared list where it keeps us both on track. So when we're filming exercise videos, we know exactly what order and how many we have to film on a daily basis. Interesting. Tell me more about the internship process. So you have an internship before they get hired on? They can come into the internship in two different ways. Um, the most common way that people come into our internship for Fit Life Champions is through a university program. My degree is in exercise science from Metro State University here in Denver. And I went through a similar internship process, about 405 required hours. I put in extra time because I was willing and committed to start early and, and late based on their timing of their uh, semester at University of Denver. So Fernando came to me at the beginning of this semester as a Metro State student as well. And he went through the exact same internship process that I went through about eight years ago. Most commonly, they come from universities. However, we do have a professional application for internships too. And this is actually a virtual program that people can do anywhere in the world to learn how to build a business, personal training business, master online training, which is a very, very um, fast growing niche in the industry, and then maybe eventually open their own studio too. Well, that sounds like a great way for them to learn and you to see if they actually fit your program. With what you do, is it more of a fit on culture or on how they actually you know, perform jobs? So it's all based on culture, but from the standards of the culture actually comes performance. We hire based on a, an abundant mindset, a belief in themselves, and then we teach them the job as they go through our internship process. If along the way that they don't actually learn our systems, because our culture is built based on our systems, then they actually don't come out of the program eligible to be hired. Interesting. Especially as a systems-minded business operator, I'm a systems and product focused person. That's how I work best. And when it comes to marketing, I'm actually at the bottom of the barrel on skill-wise. So 
uh, I relate very, very well to systems. Who's our ideal client? And then what happens next and next and next and next and all the way down to the end of the, basically the end of our first 12 week program with a client. So now you're the owner of Fit Life Champions, but of course, you know, you have a backstory. So let's go back in time and talk a little bit about what were you like at 10 years old? What was your goal then? And is what you're doing now anything near that well, of course, it, it, when we were 10 years old, we wanted, we had big dreams, you know, we wanted to be astronauts or doctors or, or lawyers, you know, playing the game of life with my older sisters, you know, they always picked doctor, lawyer, and, and I gravitated towards teacher. Uh, so growing up, I've spent a lot of time with my mom who had a home-based school in our house, preschool and kindergarten. And I saw her as a teacher and she had great quality of life and she was able to be home with us kids. And uh, she really had a great impact in our neighborhood in Billings, Montana, where I grew up. But moving on into high school and college age, I learned that my strengths weren't necessarily patience. <laughs> I come across very intense in everything that I do. And so I shifted towards exercise science, especially when I took a long break from college from about 21 until 28. And I was hotel and restaurant management mostly, which is perfect for me as a systems minded person because large banquet events, they run on systems. And then you plug people into those systems where they best fit. So when the crash happened in 2008, and there were no restaurant or, or hotel jobs, as far as the management goes, available, um, I decided to go back to school and I, I finished my exercise science degree. Well, that is awesome. And, but you're still teaching in a way. Mm -hmm. Because you're teaching people how to be fit and live a healthier lifestyle. So in a way, you did become that 10-year-old just on a different perspective. It's nice to be able to pivot when you need to. Amen to that. And I believe that after three and a half years in my personal training business, that's probably where my passion for training other trainers to do what I do came from. I get to teach like-minded personal trainers across the world how to build their business, which means I'm technically an educator, like you were saying. You know, it's interesting. I went to college for a couple of years pursuing a degree in egg education. So I was going to be an FFA teacher. Needlessly, I didn't do, go down that route. <laughs> but yeah, now with my standout pro, I'm teaching client acquisition to people, how to network, how to do it online, how to do it offline. So it's always great to get back to that parallel and really help people with what your passion is. So with that, we are going to take a quick sponsor break. And when we get back, we're going to visit more with Dave of Fit Life Champions and delve into more of why he's doing what he's doing nowadays. This episode is sponsored by Standout Pro, teaching you how to stand out and get more clients using LinkedIn. Get your free gift at standoutpro.com. We are back to this episode of Time to Fly podcast here with Dave Glazier from Fit Life Champions. Now, Dave, what was the catalyst to starting Fit Life Champions? I guess when I was um, just getting back into school, uh, my roommate at the time, his twin brother is a strength coach at Penn State, and he wrote us a strength program long distance, just, you know, sets and reps in the name of the exercise. It, it wasn't anything complicated. It was one sheet of paper that we carried with us to the gym. And I thought, well, shoot, if there's a science behind exercise, let me go back to school and learn about that. And I thought, I, I didn't know exactly what I would have in common with my classmates going back to school at 28 years old. But what I quickly found out is that there were a lot of non-traditional students at Metro State. So I fit right in. A lot of us had children. A lot of us had full-time jobs and we were plugging school in at the same time. And I accelerated through our degree program. I finished after about three years and knew that I had a passion and a purpose for training and educating other people on health and wellness. I just didn't necessarily know how I wanted to go about doing it. So after graduation, I spent nine months still working my night job as a bartender, the job that got me through school. And then my mom came to me and she, she said, Dave, will you train with me once a week at our local gym that we had both had memberships at? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll meet up with you. And she offered to pay me for my time. And then we got busted because it's, it's frowned upon to, uh, to train clients in somebody else's gym. And she asked me to find something more private. And I landed on a private studio space here in Denver. And for three and a half years, I built a business. I started sharing on Facebook uh, what I was doing with my mom and how quickly she got to her goals. And a bunch of my coworkers, friends, and family started coming to me and said, if you can do that with a 58-year-old woman, what can you do with a 30-year-old like me? And out of that, referrals and word of mouth, and then using my personal Facebook page, 
as a catalyst to launch a business that once I implemented systems in the business, I, I increased revenue 84% from year one to year two. That's a very nice increase to have. Tell me more about how you went from having the building to now you're going online more too. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a natural progression. A college friend of mine from 20 years ago was observing what I was doing on Facebook and he reached out and he said, uh, Dave, I know you have the degree. I know you have the certifications. Can you write me a program long distance? And, you know, I kind of toyed with the idea of like, I was really busy with two jobs, but I wanted to get out of my night job. And this was another revenue stream for me. So I built a simple Google spreadsheet uh, going back to what I could access on my phone and what I could build quickly. And I sent him off sets, reps, and exercise names. And it was very, very bare bones basic in the very beginning. He was my guinea pig. Um, at the same time, I was writing another program for a, another college friend of mine in Pennsylvania. So from LA to Pennsylvania, I was still serving clients and it was the beginning of online training. The programs that we were writing, that I was writing in the beginning, actually saw results. We found clients who were self-motivated. They had a strong enough purpose to actually adhere to the program without me being there in person. And then we started adding another person, another person, another person, just like those two individuals. And we were able to scale online training to serve people in Vietnam and Australia and London and Tampa, LA. Our LA client was the first and he's been with us three and a half years now. So basically your ideal client found you and then you found more like them. Is that correct? That's exactly how it worked. The, the laws of attraction, uh, he was a lot like me. He wants to work out a little bit higher intensity, uh, slam some balls, lift some heavy weight, and he wants to eat right so that he can look good in his social life and in his professional life. And then we simply just added more men like me to that program. And then the first few girls that went through the program, they were sisters actually, one at CU and one at, in Oregon. And they were so similar that I wrote one program for the both of them, charged them both the same amount. So I immediately scaled my business from one client to two by finding somebody so similar. And one of those girls added 40 pounds to her deadlift and like seven reps to her pull-up assessment in a month. So we saw results and I just kept going and, and now we have about 15 months of each of those programs written for people to access through our website. Now, is it an on-demand type of program? How does that part work? We actually go through a progression. So we start all of our members with a three-week trial. Uh, you're welcome to try out our product, see if you like it, see if it's actually something that's the best fit for you. And then we give them uh, the remainder of the first month and then we move them to month two and month three. These are all scientifically based workout programs built specifically for busy adults that want to improve mental health, decrease stress and boost energy. So what does the nutrition part play with what you do? It's such a key in realizing our clients' goals. We teach our clients how to meal prep to save time and money so that they can actually earn themselves back five to 10 hours a week if they meal prep one to two hours on a Sunday. So you do a, teach a lot of meal prepping. Do you provide the menus? For four weeks, um, we have a mobile friendly online virtual uh, meal prep course that's called Prep Wars. Uh, we're very competitive at Fit Life Champions and we, we wanted to one up each other to see who could produce the best meal prep. And we would post these pictures on social media using the hashtag Prep Wars. And it just kind of grew from there. We had 12 people go through the initial process, which was 12 weeks long. It was way too long. So we consolidated it down to an, into a four-week system where we provide breakfast, snacks, lunch, and dinners Monday through Friday so that you can actually see your results based on your body type and based on your goals. Well, that sounds very interesting. Now, with entrepreneurs, a lot of us don't make fitness a priority. Obviously, you do. But what tips would you have for us to fit fitness in throughout the day? That's my favorite question to answer. We talk to our clients about seven healthy habits to get started. First one is the most important, and it's make time. I want you to make time for exercise, make time for meal prep, and make time for yourself because exercise and nutrition are self-care. And as entrepreneurs, when we go, 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 go throughout the week, we don't take the time for ourselves because we're busy serving other people. So step number one is to make time. From there, we talk about how much water to drink, how much rest to get, and then really how to take care of our bodies throughout a seven-day process. And then we repeat, and we repeat, and we repeat. So a seven-day process, that 
makes it a lot more palatable <laughs> to break it down into a week by week basis instead of getting a calendar that says, oh, I have 26 weeks because I'm going to commit to six months that I have to do all of this and figure that out. <laughs> We definitely cannot race to the finish line. We have to take one step after another in a process. And that process is different for everybody. We just happened to start delivering all seven healthy habits in that free online training program that our, that our members receive. So if they're curious about what to do next, oh, we've got the process nailed down so that you can see your goals quickly and safely. If you are interested in checking out the seven healthy habits, free online training, please follow the link to the course available in this episode's show notes. Are there any other tips or tricks you'd like to share nutrition or fitness wise with us? Absolutely. Our core values at Fit Life Champions are safety, education, community, and transparency. We want to focus on the community piece because when we build a community of like-minded and similarly forward-thinking people, we're actually going to get to our goals much, much faster and with better adherence and consistency. So we have small group training classes that are in person in our studio, but people across the world, if there's a, say somebody who's motivated to get to their goals, if they simply just invite one or two or five friends to join them, then they build this community around them and they will reach their goals faster because it's known and scientifically proven that when we work out in a group, we burn more calories. Is that from laughing all the time? <laughs> we have a really good time when we're working out, but it's actually the competitive nature of us as human beings. We always want to push ourselves just a little bit harder and faster than our family and our friends. So when we're in a group, we naturally just want to be better than that person standing next to us. I might have to find a group situation. One of my strengths, according to the Strengths Fighter test, is competitiveness. <laughs> so that might be a better motivator for me as long as I schedule it into my calendar and actually stick to that first step too. Right, make time. I love the strengths finder. I'm actually a connector. That's my greatest strength. So connecting people together in a small community is my strength and then giving them the tools in order to move their small group together forward. Well, that sounds like a great community that you are developing there. That part, your small groups are definitely in Denver. How are you bringing that community spirit online? That's an awesome question. And I get asked that a lot from the personal trainers that I actually coach. We use Facebook as our number one tool to communicate and to build community for our members. We know that our niche, 25 to 40 year old busy adults, spend the majority of their time on Facebook as their preferred app. You can bring in Instagram, you can bring in Snapchat, but we find that having a private slash public group there where we put all of our community members into where we share new recipes, where we share new workout ideas, and where we share events to build community. And our members can post in there too, where say our LA client wants to actually do a volunteer activity for Thanksgiving. He can post in that group and say, hey, I know there's five other people in LA. Uh, why don't we do this together? Let's build community in our area. And then it just kind of snowballs with people across the country and across the world who are involved in that group. I like that idea. That's very nice to have them and to encourage them to create those small communities for other things besides fitness. Mm -hmm. It's definitely important to create those friendships no matter what area you live in. So what do you have on the horizon with Fit Life Champions? Oh, we're doing something really exciting right now that has actually taken me six years to be confident enough as a business owner in order to orchestrate. I needed to free up some of my time in the studio by finding quality teammates so that I could make the time to actually pour myself into a new project. And what we've built is we've built three brand new online training programs uh, for corrective exercise. So if a member or a community member comes to us and they say, Dave, I've got a little low back weakness or a little soreness, or I'd like to strengthen my low back. This corrective exercise program is one month long and it's built specifically for low back pain and kind of a chronic issue when somebody has it in their low back. And we take them through step by step from day one to day 30, what you need to do on a daily basis or a weekly basis in order to alleviate that low back pain. We're working in collaboration with some companies across the world that they do similar work, but they don't have this program to serve their communities. So we're collaborating with business owners across the world in order to serve their members 
with our specialty of corrective exercise for the low back, the knee joint, and the shoulder joint. So what type of businesses would be your client for this situation? I am envisioning such a big opportunity here for businesses like Lifetime Fitness, 24-Hour Fitness, Fitness 19, Anytime Fitness. These are like monstrous companies across the world that have in-person personal training and they may be dabbling with some online training, but our experience and our expertise in corrective exercise allows us to get their members back and healthy and performing at their best in the gym so that everything else outside of the gym becomes easier. That sounds interesting. So other than Fit Life Champions, being a very health conscious person, what else keeps you busy? Um, my daughter keeps me very busy. She's, she's 16 now. Uh, she's got a social life that's busier than mine. So I've got to keep up. I'm very passionate about jujitsu. It's my hobby. It's my sport of choice. So I need to get about four or five classes in per week. That also keeps me busy. Actually, it was my daughter that got me into the sport. I, I watched her, uh, her second stripe on her white belt and how passionate she was about that. And I started to attend classes so that I could keep up with her. And uh, it's something that we may have done on Christmas Eve last year of wrestling in my parents' living room at Christmas dinner just to have a little bit of fun. Do you guys compete? I've competed. I've competed three times, twice as a white belt and once as a blue belt. And uh, it's an extremely challenging opportunity to find somebody similar in, in age and similar in weight to spend six minutes grappling and competing against each other at the highest level of intensity so that you can either submit or beat them by points. Okay, my husband and son are Taekwondo. My husband is a second degree black belt and my son is on his second belt. Um, he's white belt, black stripe, and he did compete already. So yes, it is interesting. And it's, especially at that age, he's six. <laughs> Seeing the four-year-olds and the six-year-olds and the eight-year-olds and all the different emotions and skill sets that they already have or don't have. And honestly, he competed against a four-year-old girl the first time. She kicked their butt. Oh my goodness, she was a firecracker. <laughs> so in one area. But yeah, I am loving the discipline that it is bringing to him because he's already memorizing patterns, memorizing the knowledge, and that's spilling over into school already at the kindergarten level. So jujitsu, I know it's not Taekwondo, it is different, but it's a similar type of expression, which I greatly appreciate. Is there anything else that keeps you going? I, th I think it's the, it's the strong purpose uh, that I've generated in my 30s for actually serving other people through fitness and nutrition. The one thing that gets me out of bed every single morning at around 5 a.m. is this strong pull towards sharing the benefits of fitness and nutrition to combat anxiety and depression. So holding on to this purpose and this passion inspires me to create the community and Fit Life Champions, but also it drives me to coach other personal trainers to do what we do at, at Fit Life so that we have a little bit of impact in their businesses so if they each train 30 people this year and I train 10 trainers, that's 300 extra people that Fit Life isn't training, but we still have an impact to build their self-confidence, decrease their stress, and make everything else in their life easier because they've expended some energy and some angst and some, uh, some aggression out on weights that don't get hurt, <laughs> like in Taekwondo or Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> so where do you turn to stay up to date in your field? Uh, us as personal trainers, trainers have amazing resources from our certifications. The NSCA sends me monthly articles that I can read as a member. My team who's graduating, let's see, let's take my intern for example. He's graduating with all of this sense of urgency and all of this passion for learning as much as he possibly can. So he brings with him the newest knowledge that they're actually delivering to students at the collegiate level right now, which may be a complimentary piece of information that I don't know because I'm so hyper-focused on busy adults and decreasing their stress that he may want to train jujitsu male athletes from 35 to 50, and he has an area of expertise that I'm not passionate about. So collaborating with your team, which having the diverse backgrounds helps and really honing in on that knowledge based on their age group, that definitely would be helpful in developing and maybe sparking new ideas. That's absolutely correct. Where do you want our listeners to connect with you? I believe that the best way to connect is through fitlifechampions.com. 
Uh, there is the free week online training trial. If somebody happens to be in Denver, they can book a complimentary consultation by applying for training today. And then also there's uh, my contact information on the website as well. If they want to connect with me and learn how they can build their own business, then my calendar is available to book that consultation as well. This last question is based in the spirit of giving guidance to budding entrepreneurs and aspiring business professionals. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give to your younger self and when? I think about this a lot because when I come to the, to the art of duplication in my business where I needed to free up some of my time as the business owner so I could delegate tasks to my team. Had I written down every single step of the process six years ago when I began my business, I would be able to duplicate myself faster and more efficiently because my team would have the roadmap. So in playing catch up, once I realized that I couldn't serve people session after session, hour after hour for the rest of my life, I then started rewriting all the systems that I had used in my business to scale from one client to serving people all over the world. So in the last two years, I've been playing catch up and actually designing the duplicatable process, which I could have been doing from day one. I just didn't have a big enough vision for it at that time. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Time to Fly. For all of our flock, be sure to check back in next week when we have another episode live just for you. A big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Standout Pro. Be sure to get your free gift at standoutpro.com. Join our flock. Stay informed of all things Time to Fly by subscribing to our newsletter at timetoflypodcast.com. And be sure to tune in to our next show.